The British terror suspect known as Jihadi Jack says he wants to come home to the UK five years after running away to Syria. Oxford-born Jack Lutz, who is being held in a Kurdish prison accused of being a member of ISIS, told ITV News that he is missing his mother, pasties and episodes of Doctor Who. If the UK accepted me then I'd go back to the UK, it's my home. But I don't think that's going to happen, he said. No one really cares, from 15p 18 cents 18 cents 27 cents a day, more exclusives, analysis and extras. It comes after ISIS bride Shimima Begum, a former London school girl who left the UK for Syria aged 15, also appealed to be allowed to return with her newborn son. She was stripped of her British citizenship on Tuesday. When Mr. Letts holds dual nationality through his Canadian father John Letts and British mother Sally Lane, he has not received a reply from either nation's officials. Created with Sketch Created with Sketch, ISIS began as a group by the merging of extremist organizations ISI and Al Nusra in 2013. Following clashes, Syrian rebels captured the ISIS headquarters in Aleppo in January 2014. Pictured Abu Bakr al Baghdadi declared the creation of a caliphate in Mosul on the 27th of June 2014. ISIS conquered the Kurdish towns of Sinjar and Zumar in August 2014, forcing thousands of civilians to flee their homes. Pictured are a group of Yazidi Kurds who have fled on September 2, 2014. ISIS released a video depicting the beheading of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff. On September 13, they released another video showing the execution of British aid worker David Haynes. The U.S. launched its first airstrikes against ISIS in Syria on 23 September 2014. Here LT Gen William C. Mabel JNR speaks about the bombing campaign in the wake of the first strike ISIS militants sit atop a hill planted with their flag in the Syrian town of Kobani on 6 October 2014. They had been advancing on Kobani since mid-September and by now was in control of the city's entrance and exit points. Residents of the border village of Alazar keep guard day and night as they wait in fear of mortar fire from ISIS who have occupied the nearby city of Kobani smoke rises following a U.S. airstrike on Kobani, the 28th of October 2014 YPG fighters raise a flag as they reclaim Kobani on the 26th of January 2015 ISIS seized the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra on the 20th of May 2015. This image show, the city from above days after its capture by ISIS Kurdish forces are stationed on a hill above the town of Sinjar as smoke rises following U.S. airstrikes on 12 November 2015 Kurdish forces enter Sinjar after seizing it from ISIS control on 13 November 2015. Iraqi government forces make the victory sign as they retake the city of Fallujah from ISIS on 26 June 2016 Iraqi forces battle with ISIS for the city of Mosul on 30 June 2017 Members of the Iraqi Federal Police raise flags in Mosul on 8 July 2017. On the following day, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider el-Abadi declares victory over ISIS in Mosul. Members of Syrian Democratic Forces celebrate in Al-Naim Square after taking back the city of Raqqa from ISIS. U.S.-backed Syrian forces declare victory over ISIS in Raqqa on 20 October 2017 after a four-month-long campaign. Female fighters of the Syrian Democratic Forces celebrate in Al-Naim Square after taking back the city of Raqqa from ISIS. U.S.-backed Syrian forces declare victory over ISIS in Raqqa on 20 October 2017 after a four-month-long campaign trucks full of women and children arrive from the last ISIS-held areas in Deir ez or Syria in January 2019. They were among the last civilians to be living in the ISIS caliphate. By this time reduced to just two small villages in Syria's Deir ez or Zekia Ibrahim, 28, with her two-year-old son and eight-month-old daughter, after fleeing the ISIS caliphate, on Saturday, 26 January 2019 ISIS began as a group by the merging of extremist organizations ISI and al-Nusra in 2013. 
following clashes, Syrian rebels captured the ISIS headquarters in Aleppo in January 2014, pictured Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi declared the creation of a caliphate in Mosul on 27 June 2014 ISIS conquered the Kurdish towns of Sinjar and Zumar in August 2014, forcing thousands of civilians to flee their homes. are a group of Yazidi Kurds who have fled on September 2, 2014 ISIS released a video depicting the beheading of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff. On September 13, they released another video showing the execution of British aid worker David Haynes. The U.S. launched its first airstrikes against ISIS in Syria on 23 September 2014. Here LT Gen William C. Mabel JNR speaks about the bombing campaign in the wake of the first strikes ISIS militants sit atop a hill planted with their flag in the Syrian town of Kobani on 6 October 2014. They had been advancing on Kobani since mid-September and by now was in control of the city's entrance and exit points. Residents of the border village of Al-Azhar keep guard day and night as they wait in fear of mortar fire from ISIS who have occupied the nearby city of Kobani smoke rises following a U.S. airstrike on Kobani, the 28th of October 2014 YPG fighters raise a flag as they reclaim Kobani on the 26th of January 2015 ISIS seized the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra on the 20th of May 2015. This image show, the city from above days after its capture by ISIS Kurdish forces are stationed on a hill above the town of Sinjar as smoke rises following U.S. airstrikes on 12 November 2015 Kurdish forces enter Sinjar after seizing it from ISIS control on 13 November 2015. Iraqi government forces make the victory sign as they retake the city of Fallujah from ISIS on the 26th of June 2016. Iraqi forces battle with ISIS for the city of Mosul on the 30th of June 2017. Members of the Iraqi Federal Police raise flags in Mosul on the 8th of July 2017. On the following day, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi declares victory over ISIS in Mosul. Members of Syrian Democratic Forces celebrate in Al-Naim Square after taking back the city of Raqqa from ISIS. U.S.-backed Syrian forces declare victory over ISIS in Raqqa on 20 October 2017 after a four-month-long campaign. Female fighters of the Syrian Democratic Forces celebrate in Al-Naim Square after taking back the city of Raqqa from ISIS. U.S.-backed Syrian forces declare victory over ISIS in Raqqa on 20 October 2017 after a four-month-long campaign trucks full of women and children arrive from the last ISIS-held areas in Deir Ezzor, Syria in January 2019. They were among the last civilians to be living in the ISIS caliphate, by this time reduced to just two small villages in Syria's Deir Ezzor Zekia Ibrahim, 28, with her two-year-old son and eight-month-old daughter, after fleeing the ISIS caliphate, on Saturday, 26 January 2019 Mr. Let's traveled to Syria after dropping out of school age 18, in 2014. The Muslim convert first traveled to Jordan and learned Arabic before moving on through Kuwait and Iraq. He ended up living on the Oxford Street of Raqqa and claimed that seeing children killed by coalition air raids led him to welcome the 2015 Paris terror attacks that left 130 people dead. Jack Lutz, seen here in ISIS-controlled Tabka in 2016, denies he ever joined or fought on behalf of the militant organization. To be honest at the time I thought it was a good thing, he told ITV News security editor Rohit Kachru. Genuinely, at the time, we had this idea that when you're living in Raqqa getting bombed every five minutes by coalition jets and you see Literally, I've seen children burned alive, asked about the Bataclan concert victims, he said, at the time, you have this sort of, and this is what war does to you, you have this idea of, why shouldn't it happen to them, but then I realized, they have nothing to do with it, Mr. Letts was captured by the Kurdish-led YPG as he tried to leave Syria and has spent the last two years in a Kurdish prison. Censored letters from his family, delivered by the Red Cross, are his only contact to his homeland. Asked what he missed about life in the UK, he said, I miss people mostly. I miss my mum. I know that sounds a bit toddlerish, he added, even if I could just see my mum. I would like just a phone call, I don't know if Britain can do that for me here, but I'd like just a phone call to my mum, it's been two years. If I could make a request, 
I'm probably not in a position to make requests. That's it all, really. I miss my mom. What else do I miss? I miss pasties. It's not really English, sort of Scottish, isn't it? I miss pasties. And Doctor Who. Sounds a bit stupid, that's all. He said he has never seen his son from his marriage to an Iraqi woman and is unaware of her present location, but hopes that the women and children held in Kurdish camps will be allowed to return home. Women who are in the camps, there's kids who die in the camps, he said. If I have to stay here two more years, I'm not trying to make myself seem like some sort of hero. If I have to stay here for two more years and they have to take back the women in the camps, I don't mind. But it feels a bit ridiculous now, if my request is anything, is that they change this policy, they do something here. However he remained pessimistic of his chances of being brought back to Britain or taken in by Canada. I don't think I'm going to be given, back to Britain, for example. Or some Canadian official is going to come and help me because like I said, no one really cares, he said. Asked if he felt British or Canadian, he said, I feel British. I'm British. My dad's Canadian. If the UK accepted me then I'd go back to the UK, it's my home. But I don't think that's going to happen, support free-thinking journalism and subscribe to Independent Minds. A Home Office spokesperson told ITV News, in recent days the Home Secretary has clearly stated that his priority is the safety and security of Britain and the people who live here. In order to protect this country, he has the power to deprive someone of their British citizenship where it would not render them stateless. We do not comment on individual cases, but any decisions to deprive individuals of their citizenship are based on all available evidence and not taken lightly. Mr. Lutz's parents face a trial in the UK over claims they funded terrorism by sending their son money. The couple deny the charge and insist their son went to Syria to help refugees. We'll tell you what's true. You can form your own view. At The Independent, no one tells us what to write. That's why, in an era of political lies and Brexit bias, more readers are turning to an independent source. Subscribe from just 15 p a day for extra exclusives, events and ebooks, all with no ads. Subscribe now.